Robert, you don't hold Twitter, you don't hold Tesla. So just clarifying that at the start, what's your take? Well, uh, our take is that uh, Elon, the whole rene renegotiation was an option uh, that didn't pay out. And it was a perfectly rational thing for him to pursue and put money into. And, you know, folks are wondering uh, how much money to lose on the lawyers. But, you know, he had the opportunity to win billions back in, in a purchase price. And uh, clearly, as, as the case wore on and as the text messages even began to leak, uh, you know, our suspicion is that his financial backers are not comfortable with that stuff being transparent. And so when he's facing, you know, the potential loss of his co-investors uh, versus, you know, having to pay a little bit more of a premium for the deal, uh, I think it's become clear here that he was willing to take the deal at the higher price uh, without losing the backing of his uh, partners. Well, and it's even more of a premium now that, you know, Twitter shares were under so much pressure after he pulled out of the deal. You know, do you think he, it's likely he's going to get the financing that he needs to do this, the banks, that the banks are going to be able to, to sell that? Well, the markets have been bouncing back a little bit. Uh, you've seen liquidity returning in little pieces. M&A has, has frankly been the, the biggest driver of the market. You had the Adobe acquisition of Figma. That was a public over a private deal. You had Poshmark acquired by an Asian business. That's a public going private. Uh, now you've got Elon um, now coming back to the Twitter deal. And this a lot of this could be also framed around knowing that that price that he negotiated in April, the market had come down a little bit. We hadn't reached the June lows yet. So there was a 90-day window there where he was trying to get a little bit cute around the price that he was paying. But now that you're seeing the market recovering, now that you're hearing from other Federal Reserves around the world that they're starting to think about loosening uh, how far they're going to go on interest rates, you're starting to see equity multiples come back. And that also could have been a consideration where if, if he really did still want Twitter in his heart of hearts, he might have had to pay even more for it a year from now. So as market prices are improving, that also made the deal financially more attractive at, at where he had agreed to it previously. And there, hmm. there's still a very long path from here until the deal closing, uh, but it certainly seems as likely as it's ever been now. Right. It's not over till it's over and then over again. You do own a number of, of you, you do have a huge tech portfolio, including, you know, social media, uh, advertising, uh, revenue-based companies. How do you think this impacts the advertising revenue stream for Twitter? I mean, advertisers have been, you know, understandably spooked over the last few months, um, whether or not they should be back, you know, putting their money into Twitter at all anymore. It's a great question. This is, and we actually think the, the digital advertising space is going to be one of the most exciting to watch uh, in the in the fourth quarter of this year. So, so for context, Twitter they've got about five and a half billion dollars of revenue. Snapchat about four and a half. Uh, Meta about one hundred and twenty. So for orders of magnitude that we're talking here, uh, Twitter is still a relatively small player. But the thing that's different about Twitter relative to Snapchat, Twitter is a top five global web property. So when you talk about the, the reach, and if you look at the top 30 web properties in the world, they're basically owned by Google or Meta. So Twitter was the last remaining independent top 10 worldwide internet property. And that's got to be the one thing that they're in their heart of hearts telling themselves, this is why this thing is worth $44 billion. Because there's a lot more ways that we're going to be able to extract value from it beyond just advertising. So advertising is likely to look reasonably healthy in the fourth quarter. You've got the midterms coming up in a month. Political quarters are always pretty good for digital advertisers. And they also may have heard that Twitter's numbers were improving and Musk wanted to get ahead of that as well. So that's what we're mainly looking out for is the digital advertiser performance in the fourth quarter of this year.